is now law in Wisconsin. So where does your school district stand in battling the statewide budget cuts? Fox 6 investigator Brian Polson has an answer that may surprise you no matter which side you're on. That's right. When Governor Walker introduced his controversial collective bargaining bill five months ago, more than 150 school districts across the state rushed to lock in new union contracts. Hundreds of others elected to wait. So who came out on top? The finance director at one local school says everyone came out a winner with one glaring exception. All right, let's see if I can do that better, like six. Good, Kane. Even when she's babysitting, ah. Melissa Grunewald is always challenging kids to do better. Now, it's the first grade teacher herself facing the toughest challenge of her young career. I've dedicated so much to the job, and then just with one letter, it's just completely taken away from you. Grunewald is one of more than 350 Milwaukee public school teachers who got layoff notices at the end of June, thanks, she says, to drastic funding cuts in Madison. It's a lot of money being cut from education. This is ultimately about the future of our state. Governor Walker's cuts amount to a 5.5% reduction in revenue per student for every district in the state. Typically, when we have to cut the budget, class sizes go up, we cut sports, we cut music, we cut gym, something. That could have been a catastrophe for school finance directors like Emily Cozella in Brown Deer, but Cozella says she and her colleagues in other districts got help from the governor's most controversial proposal. A budget repair bill. We all knew that our revenue cap was dropping on, in an unprecedented way, but we also all knew that we had unprecedented financial opportunity. And here's why she says that. Think of a school district budget as a pie. Cut that pie up into four pieces, and Cozella says two of those pieces are staff salaries. A third piece is staff benefits, and the fourth piece is everything else. So when you had to balance the budget and you couldn't touch three quarters of it, it came pretty tough. The budget repair bill allows schools to cut into that slice of pie devoted to fringe benefits. It requires teachers to pay at least 12.6% of their own health care premiums and 5.8% of their salary toward their own pensions. But as the bill was tied up in court, schools were left in an awkward position. We were playing a poker game, all of us. Is this law going to make it or not? Um, and we laid down our last card, and our last card was an ace. But until we laid it down, we didn't know. Sarah? Hi. Jim? Hi. Kelly? Hi. During those months of uncertainty, more than 150 school districts voted to lock in new union contracts or temporary side agreements, like Port Washington, Sheboygan, Racine, Menominee Falls, Wauwatosa, and West Allis. Hundreds of others decided to wait, like Shorewood, Grafton, New Berlin, Elmbrook, Whitefish Bay, and Brown Deer. But our investigation finds that virtually every district that signed a new deal got the same basic concessions on health care and pensions. Almost every single other district that signed an extended contract signed it with the wind of the budget repair bill at their back. Cozella says she's talked to budget directors in districts with contracts and those without, and they all tell her they're in good financial shape for the upcoming school year. All of them, that is except MPS, which cut a new deal with teachers before Governor Walker was elected. Even before these various threats, or whatever you want to call them, took place, what happened last spring, um, uh, we stepped up to the plate and said, we want to do what's right for kids, and we settled this contract. Bob Peterson is president of the Milwaukee Teachers Education Association, which agreed last fall to a salary freeze and limited health care concessions that did save the district $50 million. But it still leaves taxpayers funding 100% of a teacher's pension. Hindsight's 2020. I mean, at the end of the day, um, with the same conditions, I would probably do the same thing. While it may have seemed like a good deal at the time, MPS Superintendent Gregory Thornton is now stuck with an $82 million hole in the budget and no way to close it without massive layoffs, which he says will directly hurt kids in the classroom. So last month, he asked the union to reopen the contract and agree to kick in for the pension. It was hard for me to ask, and it's going to be hard for them to say yes. It was going to be hard for them to say no. They're in a no-win situation, so to speak. Thornton says the union could save 200 teachers' jobs by agreeing to have all teachers contribute 5.8% of their salary toward the pension, which is now the state standard. The union said no. You have a choice, layoffs or pension contributions. Do you see that choice, and why did you make the choice of layoffs? I didn't choose. I didn't lay off anybody. I've been laid off 
and I don't wish that anybody. Peterson says MPS teachers have already given enough. It's, it's a tough call. Grunewald agrees, even though it's her job on the line. Of course I, I want to have a job, but I think when it comes down to it, um, I don't really know if in the long run continuing to give up more and more concessions um, is going to help the district. But on a union-friendly Facebook page, we found another MPS teacher arguing they should agree to the pension contributions. Quote, we can save jobs and show our state that we're not the greedy union thugs we're purported to be. Another asks, why is it seemingly better to have layoffs as opposed to paying a bit more? And yet another teacher emailed the Fox 6 investigators writing that if there were a way for the union to open the contracts and negotiate only on contributing toward pensions, I would hope they would at least consider having those discussions. Today we're constantly talking, and I think uh, potentially there may be a little optimism that for the children to actually may even restore some teachers down the road. Last Friday, Superintendent Thornton told the Fox 6 investigators he was still holding out hope the union would change its mind. But the MTEA president says they're done negotiating. Is there any possibility at all, is there anything being entertained by MTEA that you may still come back to the table and, and offer up uh, pension concessions to get some of these jobs back? We're not talking about that right now. Do it again. And that means one of the district's brightest young teachers is getting the ax. They don't look at your job performance. They don't look at what you do for the school. They don't look at test results. You see, Melissa Grunewald was a model teacher at 35th Street School. Her first graders all showed substantial improvement in reading scores from fall to winter to spring. But Grunewald's only been teaching for four years. And under the terms of the union contract, seniority rules. That's why seniority needs to go. In the union, I, we, we agree to disagree on things such as that. Superintendent Thornton wants to get rid of the seniority system, too. I mean, I'm losing great teachers. Great teachers are actually exiting Milwaukee Public Schools. But right now, he can't. After all, it's in the contract. MPS Superintendent Thornton says it's not too late for MTEA to agree to a pension contribution and potentially save up to 200 teachers' jobs. He says the absolute drop-dead date for him is the third Friday in September. But so far, it doesn't sound like the union is ready to budge. Well, Thornton has said he wants to get rid of the seniority system, but he can't. His hands are tied because of the contract. That's but right. what about these school districts that, that aren't tied to the contract now? Are they going to start getting rid of the seniority system? That's on the way. Just talking to the finance director there in Brown Deer, she says they're already developing a system that would reward teachers for performance, not merely for years of service.